frustrating race for you last time out at Silverstone with an electrical fault. Can you tell us about that problem? And without it, would a points finish have been possible? Um, yeah, it was a bit frustrating. Um, basically, yeah, the car was live, so we couldn't really touch the car. Um, I think the mechanics would have been a bit electrified if, if they did, so uh, we had to stay out on track. Um, and it was frustrating, but I, it's hard to say if we, I think we should have finished kind of where we were before we we had the issue. So I think we were running about eighth around there. Um, and of course it was just points missed. So that was a frustrating weekend because we, we had two tough weekends before that. Um, and that was kind of the time when we, so we were back on track uh, and opportunities to score some good points. And uh, I mean, fortunately Danny did, so uh, it wasn't too bad at the end of the, at the, end of the day. Nico, you're 21 points behind McLaren in the Constructors' Championship now. Do you think that's a fair reflection of the relative performances of the two teams? Well, it is. That's a fact. It is 21 points, but I think we probably, yeah, we, we could be right up there with them. If you add up all the, you know, complications we had, all the, the missed kind of results, uh, problems, so... We should be there thereabouts, but for sure McLaren look very strong at the moment and are probably one of our main competitors um, that we'll be battling with from here towards the end. Thanks, Nico. Good luck this weekend. Carlos, coming to you now, just to ask you about that battle with the Works Renault team. When you came into this season, did you expect to be ahead of them at this point? Um, no, I think the, the right answer is no. I wouldn't expect to, to be in front of Renault. Uh, there was a good trend going last year only in Renault and I think we, we finished all the season quite strongly but McLaren was at that time in Abu Dhabi more than half a second behind in qualifying you know pretty much in every qualifying and then in the race also it was difficult to match or to see Fernando and Stoffel battling more at the back than compared to Nico and me so it was very difficult to predict that at this stage this year we would be in front I don't think we are in front. I think we are in front in the championship, but we are very equal in performance. And um, it makes the battle good fun, like it was in Silverstone, in Austria, in France. And uh, we are happy to be battling with a team like uh, Renault. And um, I think just the objective for, of us too is just to move, keep moving forward, both together, you know, towards the top. Not look too much to what Renault is doing, but keep looking forward, keep looking to Mercedes, keep looking to Red Bull, Ferrari, and try to cut that gap down. Kimmy, coming on to you, you've scored in seven of the ten races so far this year, including the last three. Is that the level of performance and consistency that you expected from Alfa Romeo when you joined them? Um, hard to say because obviously, where well, they've been, let's say, last few years, it's something the greatest last year they made, them, let's say, good gains uh, from halfway through. So very unknown. So we just went in the season to see, try to do the maximum, see what we get, and um, yeah, we had a bit harder part than three, four races that we went all very fast. So, but yeah, we, tr we managed to recover from that at least a bit, and uh, still a long way to go. But I think it's not been too bad, at least in their own book. So you know, uh, we keep trying and try to make the car faster. Sebastian, thanks for waiting. Coming on to you now, let's start by talking about the car. Um, you've told us in the past that it's tricky to drive. Can you tell us why it's so hard to find the sweet spot of the SF90? Um, well, I think we had occasions where things were looking very good and other occasions maybe where it was a, where it was a bit more difficult, but uh, I think that's also pretty normal. Uh, throughout the season you have different tracks with different characteristics and sometimes the car feels more the way you like and other times less but um, yeah I think we have you know after the first couple of races we I think were able to get quite a good picture of you know what was missing compared to the performance we seem to have uh, at the beginning of winter testing um, and you know with that I think uh, we've made progress obviously uh, we're not where we would like to be not as competitive as we'd like to be but I think overall the understanding and the direction is uh, is going in the right way you say you're not as competitive as you want to be well Red Bull 
have taken a step forward in recent weeks. So how do you see the pecking order at the front of Formula One now? Um, well, I think obviously Mercedes does have an edge on everyone else. That's, I think, pretty clear. Um, similar to previous years, they seem to struggle uh, on tracks where tyre wear and degradation is a bit higher. Like we've maybe seen the last part of the race in France or in Austria. Uh, but in terms of raw speed, uh, they are the benchmark. Um, and I think for, for myself and for us, that's, that's the benchmark. I think um, obviously between ourselves and Red Bull, it's been sometimes closer, sometimes uh, we were ahead. Most of the times I believe we were ahead, sometimes we, we were behind, but uh, you know that's not the, the objective. Um, the objective is to fight for, for wins, and to do so at the moment, you need to be level or better than, than Mercedes. Question to Sebastian, um, how badly do you want to win on Sunday and how badly do you need to win on Sunday? Um, not badly, I mean, you know, obviously I, I want to win, that's that's for sure, but as I said, I think I'm also I think realistic. Uh, so coming here, you know, I don't feel as we are the favourites, um, but I feel we have a chance, you know, I always feel that for me that's the point of going racing, you have a chance to do, to do well, so... Um, That's, that's the objective and uh, you know we will find out uh, during the weekend um, but certainly you know it's a special place to me it's very close to where I'm from it's a lot of uh, you know family around and friends close by so yeah um, to find a good way to celebrate I wouldn't need to go very far so that would be quite handy uh, you said in the past you struggle when you're not feeling the car can you tell us Uh, are you feeling this car and if not is it compounding the weaknesses that it already has um, well I think it's not as I tried to explain earlier so I think it's normal that sometimes you feel more comfortable and sometimes less I think for us it was important after the first couple of races to understand what you know brings this inconsistency where the strength of the you know initial feeling with this car has gone and why we're not able to repeat it uh, the way we the way we'd like um, but I, I think we, we do have a very good understanding by now. I think we are trying a lot of things um, um, to, you know, uh, obviously make, make it better uh, to find the direction. I think some things that we tried very good are the things we, we went back on. Uh, Carlos, what's the, what is this, this is half of the season at the, at the moment. What's the secret to be the best of the rest? Um, at the moment, there's no secret. Um, if I find it, I will obviously keep it secret but uh, no I think it's a combination I think it's a combination of hard work done by the team and creating a package good enough to do what we are doing on race day it's a combination of good strategies come Sunday it's a combination of good starts good pace when you need to have good pace and good development I think it's Nowadays, the midfield battle is so tight that you need to be on top of everything um, and be very good at everything. And I think this year we've been very good at, at mostly everything, and um, that's why we are leading in that battle. To Sebastian and to Kimmy, do you ever miss each other as teammates? And can you say what the best qualities were about each other as a teammate? Kimmy, let's start with you. Me, things are a lot shorter now. Well, we are not in the same meeting yeah. anymore, or in the same team, so... No, I mean, we see each other still, so, you know, I, I enjoyed, for sure, uh, it was very good. But I don't, I think we were, we were friends before and it never changed and it's still the same, so, you know, life goes on and uh, hopefully, hopefully they pick up a bit speed and do, do well, so I think it's always been very honest, so... It's easy, easy going. His, his best qualities? Most straightforward. No, honest. Okay, Sebastian, on Kim. I can only return. Obviously, now the meetings are not as short as they were, which uh, is a pity. But um, yeah, uh, I think as Kimmy said, you know, we've uh, sort of got on with each other before, um, had respect for each other, and it's the same now. So, um, yeah. Best qualities, straightforward and honest. Yeah.